Hi guys, I hope you're doing well. This is what happens when your young, hip hairstylist looks at you and says, you could totally rock straight bangs. I don't know. Anyway, that's not the purpose of this video. The purpose of this video is to pick up a thread that Michelle Wong started about three weeks ago, and frankly, I'm a little astonished that, peop that no one else has picked up the thread and it is basically a hero product challenge where she looked at her collection and she challenged herself to do a full face using only hero products, only those products that brands are absolutely well known for producing or those brand, those products that put the brand on the map, if you will. And to make the challenge more interesting, there can be no duplication from one category to the next. If you use a clay to poe concealer, then you may not use a clay to poe finishing powder. About a week ago, Michelle picked up the same idea and did a collaboration with Mor Morgan Turner. I will link all of those videos in the description box below. And while I'm a tiny little channel, I feel that now that there are three editions on the interwebs, it is safe for me to venture forth and to pick up the tag and throw my hat into the ring, so to speak. The only other thing I wanted to add is this little tank top is something I made out of an Alabama Shannon pattern and it uses t-shirts that I thrifted from Goodwill and it is an entirely hand stitched little tank top. I don't know if you can see any of the detailing. I'll try to in remember to insert some some pictures of the stitching around the around the neckline. I absolutely adore Alabama Shannon's work and I will also link her studio down in the description box below. The patterns I believe are only available in her books, which are generally in print, so if you're interested, they shouldn't be difficult to find. Without further babble, let's jump into, this is the look that I was able to put together with Hero products from my collection. Now, just reflecting on my know by year and the experience of putting together this content as compared to putting together content on say a project pan approach this approach felt so much more sound to me in terms of my channel in terms of my content really what i was able to do is recognize what depth and breadth i do have in my collection as it as i took this gap year to reflect on my purchases i am encouraged by what i found and what i saw so Without further babble, let's jump into it. Okay, so let's see how we can tuck these bangs aside and apply our first hero product which it will be, this is a step I always forget, to apply a hydrating lip balm at the beginning of my routine. This one, Bite is an interesting company. It sounds like such an obvious premise, but all of their lip products are 100% edible. That makes a certain degree of sense. You don't want toxins on your lips. This balm has a bit of a sheen. It's in the color Champagne. I purchased it as part of a little Christmas set. It is available in clear. I use this in two ways, as either an overnight sleeping mask to condition my lips in the winter or in the summer. I play, I put it, I try to remember to put it on my lip to hydrate and soften before I go in with any kind of lip products. When you think of Bite Beauty, what do you think of? The Agave Sleeping Mask is one that I feel is certainly among their hero products. It, whether it's tinted or not, this one is in the shade Champagne. It's also available in clear and often available in a gifty type set for around the holidays, which is how I purchased this one. It lasts forever. This is a tiny little tube for lip 
balms, I go between this one and the Laneige Sleeping Mask. But over the summer, I've really been dipping into this one pretty heavily. I had two options in my collection for primer. I had the Laura Mercier primer, which I feel is one of her hero products. But in the end, I selected the Tatcha Silk Canvas. And this is one that I was uh, very compulsive about desiring at the end of 2018. But as you can see, I really have not dipped into it frequently. Now, Tatcha is sort of known for three or four iconic products, but I hope that you agree that this would be one of them. I am getting just a tiny bit on my finger, warming between my hands, and just pressing into the area where, where my pores are especially visible or where I have issues with foundation adhering. The usual places around the nose, on the chin, in my T-zone essentially, and then I get some fairly large pores right here on the front of my cheek. I feel that primer really depends on what you're on your individual skin concerns. I am slightly oily in the T-zone, but also maturing, so pores can be an issue, adherence can be an issue, everything can be an issue when you're aging, but we, we try to do it gracefully, don't we? I am going to go to the trouble of doing every step, although my abbreviated face does certainly does not include all of these steps, but I thought I would take you through the whole process. That being the case, think of Too Faced, I think of two products. They're Better Than Sex Mascara or they're, what do they call this? Where are my glasses? Or they're 24-hour shadow insurance. So I'm going to use a separate eye primer, just the tiniest little dot on my finger, tapped over my lids. Now this one is not terribly pigmented, but it does a good job keeping your eyeshadows from creasing. And I feel I feel that it probably helps prevent fallout if you're applying eyeshadows that are on the more shimmery side, which as you will see with my Hero eyeshadow quad, um, that can be an issue. All right, I feel that we are just about as primed as possible, aren't we? Let's do this. Let's talk about Hero foundations. I'm actually going to mix two Hero products for my foundation base, and the reason is I feel that the Estee Lauder Double Wear is absolutely a cornerstone of the brand. Now, it has the reputation of being very full coverage, very long wear, and in fact the name Double Wear has sort of extended to many many products in their line. Certainly correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, I believe this is the first that used that moniker, Double Wear. I have the shade 1N2 Ecru, and I'm just putting a tiny dollop on the back of my hand. I will be mixing it today with another Hero CC Cream. This is the It, it Cosmetics CC Cream. They have subsequently come out with multiple other editions of this core product, but I feel this is the original Hero. I am just going to mix on the back of my hand and use a dampened beauty blender to just dot onto my face. I do have a mirror here. I'm going to try to keep my face framed. I'm not very good at that. And what I hope to demonstrate is that this does not have to be a uber cakey foundation. I'm just applying what I need where I need it to mask some of the redness and pigmentation in the middle of my face face. That is really it. Now I'm, I've mixed in the IT Cosmetic CC Cream because I'm my skin is a little rebellious lately. A little bit peelier than normal around the muzzle of my face. The CC Cream just helps the double wear have a lighter feel. I thought that that would be acceptable because they are both hero products in their respective lines. When you think of concealer, what do you think of? This is an example of a concealer that is, is not my personal favorite, but it is one of the first concealers that was used on me at Ulta when I first had my brows done a couple years ago. It is the Tarte Shape Tape. 
Now this can be a little bit drying, but I'm going to use it today for the purpose of this video. Just two or three dots. I have the shade Light Neutral, and I am going to use it to color correct in the deepest crevices of my eye and across my lid. Now I believe this concealer is more appropriate perhaps for covering blemishes. It, it does have a rep reputation for being slightly drying. And the reason I'm not using my clay de peau in the concealer category is it the uh, setting powder I feel is truly the hero of, of the clay de peau line. And I wanted to reserve that for that purpose. Uh, not and this is not super flattering under the eye on me, but we will make a go of it today. Shape tape. This tube will last me forever. The Without the It Cosmetics CC Cream that Estee Lauder Double Wear would have completely set down by now, but as it is, my skin is still a little bit tacky. So before I go in with powder bronzer, I'm going to powder my face just a bit. All right, this is the Clay de Peau setting powder. It comes in one shade, but is a little bit embarrassing in a multicultural world. And this is my Chikahoto T1 powder brush. I'm just going to concentrate mainly on the T-zone and then over here where I will be applying bronzer powder. It does have a faint, faint aroma, a faint floral aroma, but it is so finely milled. It is just about the only powder I use under my eyes. It does come with a plushous applicator, but I tend to go in with a powder brush for my powder. My face is set now. Let's talk about bronzer. When I think of bronzer, I think of Bobbi Brown. Now this is not the my typical summer bronzer. This is in the shade Stone Street, which I feel was the first bronzer for my skin tone that really shows me the beauty of bronzers. I'm going to go in with my Tom Ford natural hair brush. For those of you near Tangier outlets, when I was in Charleston, I was hanging out with a friend and the cosmetic company store at Tangier outlets does have a full stock of the entire Tom Ford natural hair brush brush line. This, these are the natural hair brushes have all been discontinued and so if you would like to try if you've, you are interested in procuring one of these and are frustrated that they've gone synthetic it would be worth a phone call to the cosmetic company store. Um, I know the shop in Charleston had a very full supply. Did I mention I usually try to go into my eyes and curtain it over to connect to the side of my face as well. Just saves me a step prepping my eyes with that sun-kissed look. Let's do jump into eyes. For eyes, I really had to think. It was a toss-up between the Anastasia Beverly Hills palettes, probably the Soft Glam, the Persona Identity palette, which I feel this certainly is the hero product that put Persona Cosmetics on the map. But in the end, because I'm sort of leaning towards and enjoying luxury beauty content and products, when I think of eyeshadows, it's either Pat McGrath or Tom Ford quads. The shade Honeymoon. This was one of his first quads to storm the internet and create a pandemonium of desire. Today I'm going to go in this bronzy color up in the corner. This is his wet dry formula. I'm using the Sonia G crease to brush. I am just concentrating on the outer corner and my crease, taking it about halfway across my lid. I will intensify this a little bit with that going back and forth between the deep purple and the rosy plum and just deepening the outer V. For the inner lid I'm just dipping into this lighter shade with my ring finger and patting that across. That is glitzy. That's kind of one of those transparent topper colors so I'm going over the dark as well. 
Bazinga. I will go into that bronzy shade and just run it under my lower lash line about halfway. What do you all do with these little application tools that come with your eyeshadows? I feel it would be appropriate just to chuck them. Hero product for lining my waterline. This is the Urban Decay Gel Eyeliner in Demolition, which is just a flat brown. And I'm just going back and forth, pushing up into the roots of my lashes, connecting just a little bit on down below on the outer edge. Now for my liquid liner, I've chosen the Surat Autographie. I do have a uh, lovely connection collection of liquid liners and I generally do not use them. So I'm trying to become a little more adept at application. I will probably not feature this on the video though, because I tend to muck it up but I do like how that really deepens my lash line clearly I'm still learning how to do that I'm just going to take a kind of stiff brush little brush and soften the edge yeah let's do soap brows there is one brand that I think of when I think about brow products actually there are two brands benefit and Anastasia Beverly Hills. So I will go in with my usual Anastasia Dip Brow Pomade in the shade Blonde and my favorite soap brow technique. I really like these little round glycerin soaps that were packaged with the Beauty Blender Nordstrom set from last year. So that is what I'm using. Just brushing up. Look how fluffy that makes them. It doesn't a better job holding them than any brow gel I've ever used. Now to fill in, I'm just going in with the other end of my spoolie, which is a fairly stiff brush, placing the product on my hand like a palette, and I'm looking to smooth out any clumps that may be adhering to the brush. And then I'm just going to go in. I'm not worried about individual strokes. I'm just looking to fill in and reshape the tail. I like a straighter, straighter brow than what I was gifted with. Now any complete craziness is softened when you run through with the spoolie again. Let's talk about iconic hero blush products. I think absolutely of the NARS orgasm. Okay, I, I will think just of hero run blushes my stiff that or the Chanel cheek brush and over the stick. Since I have recently fallen back in love with the orgasm multi stick, this is what I'm going to dip into today. And I like to go right onto the apple of my cheek and back, buffing in and over to sort of wash and connect with where I've already applied bronzer and sort of over to that, to the eye look. This multi-stick has a distinct shimmer, which I very much enjoy in the summertime. Can you see the shimmer on my cheek? That is not highlight, it's just the slight shimmer from the multi-stick. Okay, for the mascara, I'm going to go in with my Lancome Musher Big. Definitely feel that even if you have never purchased Lancome before, chances are you have come across this mascara. It does not transfer to my hooded lids as readily as the Chanel La Volume, but for some reason I just prefer the finish of the La Volume. And the La Volume stays put better if I use a lash primer. While I would likely stop here for a general daytime look, really to play with the full range of my hero products i'm going to go a little bit further we will look at highlighters when i think of highlighters i think of the first highlighter that i purchased after much much research on the internet and i think that you'll probably agree that the charlotte tilbury film star bronze and glow is one of the charlotte tilbury hero products so this is what i'm going to apply today as a highlight i'm using my wayne goss airbrush this is such a unique product it is blue squirrel it picks up the perfect amount of product 
and it is like no other brush in my collection. I feel the balm has completely absorbed, my lips feel hydrated, and I think that this is a no-brainer, the lip category. When I think of lipsticks, when I think of contemporary makeup artists, when I think of Audrey Hepburn's lipstick case and who purchased it at Christie's and how committed she was to purchasing that lipstick case by Tiffany, I think of Lisa Eldridge. This is from her matte lipstick collection. This was the first collection she came out with right before the holidays, and I'm going to put this on as a stain. Although I could go bold and matte, I just don't think it would go with the, the look I've got going. And I want to show you how versatile these lipsticks are if you take your time to apply them in different ways. This one actually could go on the cheek too, but that would that would sort of blow apart my look. So there is the Velvet Ribbon from Lisa Eldridge's eponymous lipstick line. I adore it, I love it. For glosses, I'm going to dip into the Fenty Gloss Balm in Fenty Glow. This was her first. I own no other Fenty products although I've been tempted by a few. I absolutely adore what it does to this subtle wash of lip stain that I'm wearing. The finishing powder I've chosen is by Hourglass. And again, I own one, one Hourglass product and it is the, this is the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder in the shade Luminous Light, and I'm going to go in and use it as a finishing powder with my Sonia G Face One brush. This will just help unify where, especially those cheek products, tend to look distinct and can look stripey, and it helps absorb oils without looking flat and matte. So I do enjoy this product, I just don't reach for it very often. There is no look complete without fragrance. This is probably the top selling Jo Malone cologne in the scent Wood Sage and Sea Salt. I love it. I could bathe in this. If they had a shower oil, I would buy it. So fresh. And how about a setting spray since it is July in the Southeast. This is the All Nighter. I haven't used this for a while, so I sprayed it off to the side just to make sure that uh, I wouldn't hit any clumps. It goes on really nicely. But that is the look. That is the Summer Full Face Hero Edition. I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you so much for joining me. The, you know, the drill, the YouTube algorithm prioritizes content that has comments, that has likes, and that has a high subscription count. So I hope you'll consider hitting like and subscribe. I'd love to hear below in the comment field what your hero products are. I will see you in the next video. Ciao.